guys, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> I keep thinking that on the daily. If <laughs> I'm just jumping random things. Hi all, I went, welcome to my middle channel. Um, if you are new here, I am going to attempt my first Iron Butt Saddle Sore 1000. So that means riding 1000 miles plus, actually my, um, my route is about 1040, and riding those 1000 miles in 24 hours. <laughs> and doing this route, I am actually planning on the Lake Michigan tour so starting out here in wisconsin going all the way through illinois coming up michigan and then back to wisconsin and i do this in two days it was four two <laughs> so i have everything laid out on the dining room table and i wanted to show you guys through everything that i have read on forums on the iron book Facebook page, which has been very, very helpful for any of you that are looking. Um, and then just getting feedback from others that have actually done this challenge before. So I wanted to share what I am bringing with in preparation for this ride with you guys. And then letting you know afterwards what did work, what didn't work. Um, but yeah, let's get to it. I'll show you. All right, ready? I'll go through all of this with you because it kind of feels like a lot, but let's go through it. Okay. So to start off with, I'll go through motorcycle essentials right now. I have two pairs of bungee cords. Then I have rack straps as well. So these will go on the backpack that's actually underneath my helmet. That will house my tent um, blanket and probably some of the heated gear so they're easy to access if I need to. So that will go in there but these will help tie down. I've got kickstand if I need to, rig and bug slide because being on the road for 24 hours most likely I will need to clean off either my helmet and or the windshield. I have rescue tape, which is good and heat resistant, better than duct tape or anything else that I need to do if I need to tie up <laughs> anything on my bike, I don't know. It's always good to have these or um, zip ties as well. So I've got both of those um, battery tender, just in case I need to <laughs> kickstart battery. I have um, air pump. I most likely will still bring these guys. These are just um, working gloves. Need to. I have a tire repair kit as well. This is my go-to guy for anything on the bike pretty much. This is small, compact, and has anything I can truly really need. Um, I also have an adjustable wrench and handful of other tools that are still in my saddle bags yet too but that's a good guy i have a wallet ninja here as well as knife and i think that's pretty much truly it for the actual bike there is this luminade light which is actually freaking bright and expands to an act to a lantern as well but just in case if i am on the side of the road and need to just throw caution to anybody else riding out there there is um flashing light option this is pretty cool because it actually can be charged by the sun as well so always good to have and it's very compact um, that i can put into my small saddle bags as well there are hand warmers and toe warmers that i will pack along with for the night riding gear and so let's do that next so over in this general area right now i have let's do this first my riding gear so i've got my jacket with my armor and helmet and riding gloves of course 
I love stance socks. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them at all or not, but of course they make some Harley branded ones too. New socks always make your feet feel absolutely amazing. So I bought a pair and actually another pair as well to just kind of help with that boost if I need to and for riding for, um, for the route. So got those and my, I think these are Balsa, Balsa branded Harley riding boots as well. So of course, helmet, jacket, there's liner that goes into my jacket if I need to for just an extra layer before sundown comes. But to help, which is keeping me warm through that night riding, I've got a long sleeve and then also um, leggings to go underneath my jeans as well. There are nighttime riding gear, or riding gloves I should say, that I can use as well. There is this heated vest, which has to be charged. So I have two battery packs in here. So I have to have this plugged in in order for this to work. But if all else fails, I am really truly cold this guy will go underneath my um jacket and help keep me warm for those those crucial night night part of the ride of course my chaps and to help with visibility um at night anybody knows my husband is uh in the military and if anybody knows what this is this is a pt so um physical training belt so to help with visibility riding at night that will definitely go across my chest when i am riding in the evenings but to help when all else fails and i need some extra added support with the seat that i have this is actually a bike biking underwear and it has the padded is to it so if i need just that extra boost of something that's probably gonna go on my butt at some point <laughs> fingers crossed if i need it if i don't i don't know but it's always good to just have that back up this is actually a down jacket that if i need to change things up and still need to be warm there's a columbia jacket that i can put on underneath my riding jacket but this is in a dry compression bag already just if it's up nice and snug i have extra pair of clothes because god forbid if i get stuck in the rain or something and need to stay the night and have an extra pair of clothes it's always good so of course bra underwear new pair of socks and um shirt and pants. This will all go in another dry compression bag here, but I didn't want to put it all in so you guys can see. Rain gear, of course this will go in my saddle bags to easy access if I need to put on. There is a one person pop-up tent I have raided, if you can kind of tell, raided my husband's military supplies that we have downstairs. But this is pretty nifty that there isn't any construction you have to do with tent poles or whatnot. It literally just pops up and out so one person tent and then i have this guy in a dry compression bag as well army will be blanket we absolutely love love these things and so this will keep me warm and long and there also is a pillow in the bottom of this so it compacts pretty pretty well and so this guy this guy most of this clothes will go in this i think it's a bug out bag of course, this is my husband's leftovers as well. A bug out bag that will go on the back of my bike and not in my saddle bags. But honestly, some of this might fit into my saddle bags as well. So we'll see once I put everything in tomorrow. But other than that, as far as riding gears go, I have a headband, which is the tail tag, tag gear. Um, local to Wisconsin, if you're not familiar. I have an extra pair of riding gloves. These are from last season, two seasons ago, so they're pretty well loved, but just in case if I need anything, another pair of riding gloves is always good. Face shield. Um, other than that, as far as clothing goes, that's pretty much it. I have any girl problems? No, there is a brush and a mirror in here. Most likely my hair will be, will be braided and I won't really have a problem with it, but just in case, grab that guy. This is a hydro pack, which is actually a water bottle that fits pretty 
tightly up and if I need to carry any extra additional hydration that's a good one to have but most of this other stuff in this general area will go in this small tank bag that I have tested out last week or so and it's pretty it's not big but it works well for what I need because I, honestly I don't need too too much what I do need to house is most of my um, electronic equipment that I need to access easily and then of course we've got the snacks so with the tank bag I have let's go through electronics first I've got my GoPro Hero 8 which will go of course on the front part of my helmet but I've got backup batteries because they go through like candy pretty much this will attach to the two battery packs that I have here also an extra charging cable for my GoPro Hero 5 session. Um, this guy, unfortunately, there's no easy way to do it. Only you have to take off the cover, or you take off the cover to charge it. So if I do run out of battery on it, I'm going to be able to charge that quickly, hopefully. Um, then I have this headlamp, which is pretty freaking bright, actually. Whoa. <laughs> um, have that and then I'll bring extra pair of batteries too. cell phone charger because the most crucial part is actually what I'm filming on right now which will house my route that I am doing the GPS tracker to have it certified for the iron butt but having a way to charge this guy through my battery pack so I'll house my battery battery packs in here and then there's a small zipper at the bottom that will allow the cable to come through and either hook up to the phone holder that I have on my bike or up here in the front part. So other than that, as far as tank bag goes, there are a couple, of course, Illinois tolls. So I have an iPass that I purchased that will go on my windshield for my bike and there's also a tool for the Mackinac bridge that I need to go through so I've got extra cash probably a couple more that I'll bring with two but just extra dollars for that like I mentioned the two battery packs that are fully charged I've got this little nifty stand that goes for my DJI Osmo pocket so I am a motor vlogger, but I don't want to be messing around with these guys if I need to do anything hand-holding to get recorded. Of course, I don't want to use my phone and use up its battery, so I am going to, between the four of them, of these guys, I should be able to capture my iron butt pretty well. So this guy is fantastic, and I absolutely love how small and compact that is for recording and so at the gas stations most likely I will be utilizing that of course I've got my garage door opener to get back in but I have my Senna and then also my husband's Senna as well for feeding my route to my helmet and through the speakers in there but also I love love listening to the radio and so having that option for both mine and his together will be able to not have to charge these at any point when I do this route, which will be nice. So when one is done, I'll just flop on to the next one for that sake. Um, crucial, crucial part for me riding for the enjoyment um, of not having to listen to wind noise for 22 hours straight, I have these Eargasm earplugs, which I have tested out over the last two weeks and have been very well loved. So these are a go-to when I start my route and all the way through. But then I've got some snacky snacks that will go all in this tank bag. So I've got um, hydration tablets that I can put into a water bottle if I just need that extra boost. Of course, pain reliever, ibuprofen is always good to have. Of course, I'm writing in the COVID situation still so having that mask and then also hand sanitizer to easily access um, will be a nice added touch too so with my marathon training that I have done um, I am utilizing some of the energy snacks that I have so I've got of course some cliff bars a couple other granola bars that I can easily snack on but there are these waffle stingers 
I've got some energy chews, raw energy bar, a couple other ones. I'm sure I'll put some more in that tank bag as well, but just to have something to easily snack on when I'm at the gas stops will be great. So I don't have to keep running back into the gas station for that. Um, then the most important part as far as certification goes. So I have this small, just a pencil case that will house everything in the back part of the tank bag um, for that. So I have, let's see here. I've got the route. If you've seen my Instagram account, I kind of laid out everything. It might have went a little bit more than what I needed to, but I'd rather be over prepared than not. So it includes all the gas stops that I'm doing, the time it's going to take me to complete from um, one gas stop to the next stop, the distance it will take me for that, the timing of when I should be arriving at that gas station, and then the estimated hours, so the time it takes me to complete the route, but also the breaks in between. So it gives me an idea of hours of operation for the gas stations because there are some that close and are not open 24 hours that I've kind of noted here, highlighted, just in case I need to be aware of that. Sorry guys, my hand is creeping up. Um, but there are notes on here too of when I should be arriving um, or when I should be leaving that gas station to get to the next one. So it's always a good um, checklist to have. But with that, I actually found this hack on the Facebook Iron Butt group. These are painter's tape pretty much. And so I did each of the stops and they're kind of like pull tabs almost. So each stop has the um, number listed. So when I do do the certification, which I'll go through that checklist, I can know which gas station I'm gonna be at, the city it's gonna be, and on also like the exit it will um, take, I'll need to take for it. So this just kind of helps me mentally not have to think so much. Um, and so once I get to the one stop, I'll literally just pull the tab off and go to the next one. And it helps me give an idea of when I should be breaking. Um, so I'll have the break time on here. And then when I need to leave that gas station by in order to get to the next gas station stop. So this is good. This will actually go on my tank bag, in, er, on my tank, in front of my tank bag. So I can just kind of keep taps on it. But in this small pencil case, will house all of my gas receipts and paperwork. So I have a plastic bag that will keep the actual gas station receipts. There is the ride log. I won't be filling this out during the actual ride just because there's so much documentation. I will have everything on my phone and then also the gas receipts. So I should know from my receipts to be able to fill this out afterwards, but still good to have just in case I do need to document at any point. Um, this helps with the starting verification and the ending verification, so you have to have a witness to sign for when you start. So I will be utilizing any of the clerks <laughs> at the gas stations just because I don't have anybody here when I do um, start my iron button. And then also, of course, the route of Lake Michigan that I'm taking just as a good reference for my sake and that will all go in this pencil case here along with documentation items so two sharpies and a pen probably will bring another pen just in case gas money thank you quick trip um for that sake so most actually most all of the stops that I'm doing in Wisconsin will be at quick trip quick trip gas station so I'll be utilizing them if I do get stuck on the road I have my honk membership and then also the rest brown um triple a pretty much um license registration and then gas money <laughs> for that and yeah I think I covered everything oh I've got these guys too another hack that I found was just to get a ref like to refresh yourself when you're kind of in that lull of riding was, I saw was to brush your teeth and I thought actually that's pretty genius. So I've just got a toothbrush and some toothpaste, two hair ponies cause girls, we never have enough of those ponies. So those will go into my tank bag too. Okay, so I think I have covered everything as far as what I am packing, 
for this iron butt challenge but i would love to know in the description below if there's anything else you feel like i'm missing for my first ride um because most likely this will not be the only iron butt challenge i do i have a feeling i'm going to do multiple of these but i am going to pack everything up in the bags that they belong in put them on the bike and kind of show you my process and thought process of how i pack my motorcycle for this challenge um, i'm probably going to do that tomorrow because it's pretty dark out right now <laughs> and then I'm going to take it for a ride to work just to test it out, make sure I'm comfortable with everything that I've got going on before I start my challenge in two days. Two days. I feel nervous, but I feel excited too. Slightly nervous. Um, but I have like checklist upon checklist and just double check, triple check everything, thought of everything that I think I can think of. Um, I'm sure there's always going to be something, but start with this as a basis. Let me know in the description below if there's anything else you think that I'm missing, but I want to go through my thought process on how I created my route, um, just planning it out, giving you guys just tips for the template that I created in the Excel document, going through the GPS tracker, making sure everything is certifiable using, um, SW Connect app and Spot Wallet. That's for a whole, whole nother video, which I will put above my head and in the description below once I complete that and publish that for you guys. Um, and then also the actual ride because everybody wants to know how the ride actually went for me. <laughs> Hopefully I get certified for this route, but just taking you guys along for that ride. So I'll put that in the description below once it is published as well. But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in today. Um, if you have any other questions or anything you want to, I guess, ask me about for this Iron Butt Challenge, just let me know. Um, reach out to me here on YouTube in the comments below or also on Instagram at WhitMeza. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.